Welcome to The Advocate, a program that thrashes out all the topical issues of the day. When you are in government, you don't see nothing wrong mm, with exactly. whatever is happening. The moment you are out there, everything is that wrong. Is, we can't even see yes. many women now, and when they're there, they're not even really making a mark, and then they have an NYSC problem and this and that. One of the reasons why we don't have more women in politics in Nigeria is for as long as political meetings continue to take place in the middle of the night. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. no, really. It's disastrous for a president to, even to be unaware. unaware of the chief it's justice. It's a ploy. It could be a strategy. That strategy was it's a terrible, like a terrible <laughs> strategy. <laughs> because the box stops at your table. Whether it's that we don't look after our cities and quite frankly Nigeria has become in a very ugly place. Mm. When you are the only one feeding the people with this news and there is nobody countering them, it becomes, you know, the, the news. To you, I say welcome to The Advocate. And to myself, I say welcome back. It's good to be back. Today, I get to carry the torch on the first lap, and I'm directing my advocacy at the looming PNID debacle. Chukem had actually be set to unveil a discovery that seems to be deluding a lot of us when he speaks of the real solution to our real problem. A Kenya will be hitting the bullseye by taking the xenophobic attack in South Africa with a call to action. Emeka doesn't plan to lower the temple. He points to tradition and religion as being the root of our underdevelopment. I wonder who will agree with him. Wait and see as we hit the tracks after the break. The recent clampdown of over 70 Nigerians on the claim of their involvement in fraudulent activities, totaling millions of dollars, particularly in the US, has provoked several reactions back home. Ethnic and other sentiments were act. Barely a month after, judgment was given in favor of a barely known company against Nigeria in the sum of over $9.6 billion. An unpatriotic and most likely corruption driven agreement was signed in 2010, binding the country to a largely defective contract for 20 years by an agency of government that had no powers to do so. The contract was not vetted or approved by the Minister of Justice at the time, whose office ordinarily should have done so. How does a sovereign country sign an agreement with a private company and agree that arbitration in the event of a dispute would be in the company's home country? <laughs> it highlights the lack of transparency in the way deals and agreements are entered on behalf of all of us. It also brings into stark relief the impunity and lack of consequences for wrongdoing in Nigeria. We just do not punish failure to act in the best interest of the country. Now, for whatever reason, and I suspect it to be designed ab initio, the contract failed. So Nigeria did not build a gas plant, which was supposed to bring gas to the location of the plant in Cross Rivers. I still have not heard a plausible reason for this, except that the economy could not make it feasible to build one. It should be noted that P and ID never built the proposed gas plant. They claim to have invested $40 million on equipment and foreign direct investment in the country. In fact, PNID have invested nothing in this camp beyond that it cost them to come to Nigeria to sign this bogus contract. No money, no equipment, no plant, nothing. They just want to walk away with $9.6 billion. This is almost 20% of our foreign reserves. Finally, let the government sound it loud and clear to the international community that we will not pay anybody $9.6 billion. We will obviously have to pay something for the corruption ineptitude in our own, of our own people. It should, however, not be, never be anything near the amount in dispute, with almost half of it going to end up in the British Treasury as taxes. Any government that pays that kind of money out in a situation like this will greatly increase the poverty and suffering, suffering of its people that are already heavily burdened and runs the risk of begin, uh, putting a big question on its own legitimacy. Well, my, my take is that, uh, as you said, um, it appears to me, and given my own little experience, my sojourn in government, that the whole thing was, as you said, designed to fail. Absolutely. It, it, it looked to me like it was, this was really a scam of some yeah. sort. Um, I've read, I saw reports just two days ago, published in, a, in an international magazine, um, the British journalists dug in and they found that this same person, the man behind P Queen, and D, yeah, Queen. yeah, had a history of scams mm, all across Europe and in, in, mm -hmm. in, 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 in Africa. So yeah. 
um, and this is part of their playbook. Um, it's, I'm not... But sorry, when you say it was designed to fail on both sides, because oh, I can I, understand I, I, why I, I, Mark Queen would okay, want it to yeah, fail. I'm, I'm not ah, saying okay. that um, the, the Nigerian side or whoever the, the, you know, knew it was going to fail, mm. but there's this, this thing we have, this mindset we have in, 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 with, within public officials that there's no sense of rigor. Okay. Um, we're always quick to anything coming from a white person, a foreigner, we're quick to, yes, 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 it's bright. I've seen so many, mm -hmm. I mean, I've, I, I don't want to mention names, but I've seen a similar contract in my own neck of the woods, in my mm -hmm. own sector, where a certain government was supposed to give us almost half a billion um, as a loan to their own company that was in Nigeria mm. to do something for the benefit of Nigeria. And mm -hmm. all the equipment would come from their own country. And as, as, a, as, a, as a direct general of a regulatory agency, I said, absolutely not. And I, and I said, no. Meanwhile, they had gone and gotten approval from Federal Executive so Council. So you went for you. So, but now they needed recertification. And I said, absolutely not. And it cost a big ruckus. But the, my point is that we need to, we, we, we have this system in place where government officials do not do the necessary due, due diligence, diligence right. and for fall into the trap of this band of mercenary uh, briefcase carrying contractors that come from Europe, especially, you know, I, I hate to say it, from the UK. From who the just, UK, yeah. yeah um, they know the system. They've, they've, they've had these decades of dealing with, with us. Mm. And they're just briefcase carrying um, charlatans. Yeah. Mm. I mean, yeah, yeah. what you're saying, really, because I, when he was talking, I'm like, the signposts were there. Right. And so for people not to have seen it, even till now, you sort of ask, and I, someone close to me was asking, are you saying that this, there wasn't enough for a lawyer or anybody we uh, give the, the, the brief to go and make a strong case in our also, favor? It's but, also but, complacency. But, but, he's, yeah, no, so but they, I'm trying to bring in an argument as yeah. well to say that people are deliberately not doing what they ought to because they have self-interest. Interest, so yes, the briefcase the carrying people yeah. are, are giving them some incentive yes. to look away yes. and they're happy Absolutely. to enrich themselves at mm -hmm. the expense of the national yeah. coffer. So I feel that this case we need to make an example and the reason why till today maybe people are still hesitant to open, blow it wide open is because the implications will meet them some very heavy so maybe this cabal we keep hearing about in the shadows involved. might yeah. finally come yeah. out and of let, the shadows let, let, and let you know yeah. who they are. Yeah. Yeah. And let it happen yeah. because yeah. I think that you know I mean Sometimes bad things happen so that we learn lessons yeah. and we get better for it. Yeah. And so maybe this is the perfect example of how we move on, how we stop this kind of stupidity in, in, in governance. Because mm -hmm. I also think that, and let me say yes, two things have happened here. You had the initial scam, an initial right. complacency right. of the government agency involved to do right. the right thing. Right. But you also have the complacency of the successive administration, especially to this one, to, to deal when this with case... It went to court to deal with it aggressively. Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. To, present to, to all the present evidence, all yes. evidence they had all and the deal weapons. with it aggressively. And even now, are they dealing with and it even aggressively now, enough, enough? Look, there's nothing that says, yeah. it's just that you know, we've, we've put ourselves in a catch-22 situation. We can also, the government of Nigeria can also sue the same company here yeah, for, exactly. for fraud. Yeah, for fraud yeah. And the principles involved, we have our own court system. Let's not always demur to uh, foreign courts as if yeah. they have superior knowledge yeah. or, or yeah. they don't even have a sense of national interest yeah. from their perspective. Yeah. Yes, because you mentioned yeah. the tax yes. that yeah. they yeah. stand Absolutely. Yeah. 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 yeah, I think in the end, this thing was designed to fail from both sides. This is a big scam. It's not just the white man. It's also us. Whoever was on our side was a scammer as well. Okay. And um, it's a big thing. Uh, you know, this sort of figures, somebody is somewhere hoping it all goes through. Nigeria pays. He's Nigerian, by the way, or they are Nigerian, this group. Oh. And they are waiting for their pay. A lot of the acts from their own country. To yeah. be found by yes. way. Yeah. They are waiting for payday from their own country. <laughs> as part of this sort of thing. Okay. So it's, it's, it's an amazing country. And they don't yeah. mind that one-fifth of our foreign reserves no. sinks I, into I, I, think, I mean, they won't get one-fifth, No, you see, you see even the, 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 the PID people are saying, oh, yeah. but uh, you, we're, we're, still, we're still open to negotiation. Yeah, so you right. see, that's part of the scam. Yeah, yeah, that's that's it. Maybe Stop government has offered them 600 the million. So the question we're not asking now is PNID They've, they've not, there's absolutely nothing on ground. No yeah. plant, mm -hmm. yeah. no nothing. Yeah. So what justifications they have to claim, to make all those claims, mm -hmm. right? They never had the intention to build any plant. And let's, let's be clear, the motive behind this whole thing is laudable. I mean, we're trying to reduce mm -hmm. gas flaring yeah, and all of that. Right. Yeah. So yeah, but who would give 
you know, the kind of concession they gave to the company. Well, I mean, I, I did a bit of, I did a bit in their of, country 20 well, the, years. The much, the much I did of law, when I, I did law, yeah. you know, there's such a thing as uh, unfair contract terms yeah. act, yeah. you know, um, OCTA, you know, where if the terms are so lopsided yeah, yeah. you can yeah. actually just say no this 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 contract was not actually a viable contract on the basis of the unfair but also, but also we, need to, we need to also look at the fact that in this case in this particular matter the substance was not about whether they built a plant or not it was a breach of agreement okay right? that we didn't yeah, supply them yes. with the gas yes it was a breach of agreement that you you said but, but the agreement the agreement was very clear yeah you'd give us the feed yeah but we'll you know, build the plant when it goes right? to court yeah they're not they're not looking at the substance, substance. They're looking at what you, your I negligence, yeah, your what negligence, your, right, your negligence. Right, yes. And also, I, I also think that what infuriated the court in this instance is that the lackadaisical attitude mm, of okay. Nigerian yeah. defense yeah. to put up a defense. Oh, yeah. boy. Because that, that, that 9.6 seems to me to be almost excessive, excessive and arbitrary. Like, yeah. the, like the judge just said, you know what? You maximum. should pay this maximum yeah. for your Punitive. own. Yes. Um, for your own, um, um, sh shall I use the word? Stupidity, yes. right, yeah. right, right, and I think that's yeah. that, that's another issue yeah. because we j just seem to like, yeah, this is not serious. Mm. Okay, we know it's a scam, but Defe therefore we're not going to defend it. It doesn't matter. Apparently, by the month, one million is being yeah. added to that. Yeah, yeah that's right. In that's interest, right. Yeah. which is yeah. astounding. Yeah. But I like the way you started. Anyway, I like the fact that you started by reminding us that we're getting all excited about the FBI list. Right. Uh, you know, crimes in 11, high places. 11, and yet, look at some people million. who are stealing. Nine point six all billion. Scams are bigger scams. Yes. <laughs> the whole thing. The whole. The, I mean, I look. I don't want to sound, but. <laughs> Please sound it because <laughs> I, 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 Europeans, I'm happy you Europeans um, have a, a, a you know a richer history, if I can of use that scamming. As, of scamming, <laughs> um, um, professional, scammer. professional scammers, and mm. as well disguised as as businesses, as uh, no, they have they have more experience than us. Mm. We just. Yeah. I think the whole thing is that because we're more flamboyant. Mm. Small boy, you make uh, $20,000, you go and buy Mercedes, Mercedes. Benz and you, you say, I mean, start making noise. But these guys, they do these things, Benz, they do these yeah. things. They've been doing these things. Of so, of, they know how to do these things. Yeah. They've set up, they've, accounts, so they've built yes. an industry mm. based on, 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 on this kind of thing. So, so what do we, I mean, again, because I always say to myself, what do we as individuals do? I know that even the average man on the streets is mm. watching this thing and he knows that his life is somehow tied to this nine Exactly, of course. of course. But what do, and we know that these people have been getting away with murder, as it were, or looting our treasury for years, and we can't put our finger on it, even though the newspapers are telling us they're going to expose them. Mm -hmm. Let's wait and see, but what do we as individuals do? Do you have any idea what we can do to ensure I think, that this I think conversations, so, conversations yeah. such as this, awareness, and, awareness know, and highlighting it, yeah. and putting pressure on the government agencies, especially the EFCC and all the agencies of government, and it's not just a, it's not just a question of criminal investigation now. Mm -hmm. I think that even a national the Office of National Security Advisor should be should be involved in this because this is a, this is national a, yes, security. This absolutely. is a question of national security. Yeah. If twenty percent of, of your of your of your foreign um, uh, reserve reserves is going to go into paying somebody. In this kind you of thing, you have to know whether you have to know like, what's uh, everything. Yeah, yeah. If, if, even the matter you raised, you know, on an individual one-on-one -on -one daily thing, yeah. the matter you raised about people pressuring you to basically step aside so they can loot. I wish we had more whistle blowing on matters like that because these are people who are habitually doing this, and you want to make them afraid of the law in some way. Is that like, why would you not blow the whistle on such people? Maybe if you. Um, if the, the the point is that we have a we have a system in place where. Um, Depending on who you are, um, and you own. Look, Nigeria is still pretty much a, a, a country of of um, boys' club. Right. Even the law bends to politics. Mm -hmm. Let's let's be real about. Let's that's mm -hmm. reality. The law will bend to politics. The law will bend to who you know and who has authority to do X, Y, to 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 decide that you're no longer. So even a if you criminal. report the person, yes, the law may not go course. after them. Yeah, absolutely. So. Um, one has to, to face that reality and do, in my case, do what I can to stop what I thought I had evidence and I had the authority to stop, to stop. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Because it could also be that I didn't have the authority to stop it, but mm. in this instance I had the authority to stop it and I, and I, and I, and I stopped it. it. I blocked it. <laughs> Sometimes you get the feeling that certain events are leading to a watershed moment. Chuka's solution-oriented advocacy is already beginning to sound like music to our ears. After the break. Welcome to The Advocate a program that thrashes out all the topical issues of the day. When you are in government, you don't see nothing wrong mm, with exactly. whatever is happening. The moment you are out there, 
everything is that wrong. Is, you yeah. can't even see yes. many women now, and when they're there, they're not even really making a mark, and then they have an NYSC problem and this and that. One of the reasons why we don't have more women in politics in Nigeria is for as long as political meetings continue to take place in the middle of the night. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. no, really. It's disastrous for a president to, even to be unaware. unaware of the chief it's justice. It's a ploy. It could be a strategy. That strategy was it's a very, terrible, very, very <laughs> terrible strategy. <laughs> because the box stops at your table. Whether it's that we don't look after our cities and quite frankly Nigeria has become in a very ugly place. Mm. When you are the only one feeding the people with this news and there is nobody countering them, it becomes, you know, the, the news. You're watching The Advocate on Plus TV Africa. Time to get real. I admire those who spend time to research and share their thoughts and findings with us. Recently at a talk under the aegis of 9H Design Talk, which I run, Chi Iro Mwanya, a doctor architect, spoke about our housing deficit and how to raise money to deal with it. It was thorough. It was peer-reviewed by reserve bank heads in the US, by professors of economics there, by a past governor of the Nigerian Central Bank and some other top financial analysts. As he spoke, we were spellbound. Summary. At $59 per barrel, Nigeria borrows four times its tied fund from the African Development Bank in what is known as the African Development Fund Partial Credit Guarantees. That comes to about $524 billion. This provides for 13.75 million low income, 3 million medium income, and 250,000 high income housing. After nine years, the process releases 28 billion every year for 30 years. There will be $56 billion to spend on rail, road, electricity, and such infrastructure. There's only one reason I will not bother to seek audience with government for the brilliant work of Iro Moanya. They will not hear him out or carry out his suggestions. They will probably steal his work, alter it, and avoid paying for his time and effort. There are many who struggle to research brilliant ideas in their respective fields for the betterment of Nigeria. They go unheralded. What Nigerians prefer to do is to pray for that elusive success. The real solutions come from those like Iro Mwanya. They pray and they work. We need more people like Chi Iro Mwanya. We celebrate a few dazzling performers, but really not getting to the level of genuine ideas. I suspect the Minister of Housing should be thinking of seeing me. I'll introduce him to Iro Mwanya. I was there. I was there at Indeed, that time. Um, yes. And I was yes. inspired, like yes. you said, yes. rightly said. Um, yes. You know, because I, I sat there, and what was impressive about his presentation is that he gave you figures. Uh, why would we pray? Don't let these numbers confuse you. He says it's 8 million person year jobs. It means there are 8 million jobs if each of those jobs lasted only a year. But because jobs don't last a year, it equals to about 10 million full time jobs for a seven year construction period. Yeah. He gave you a breakdown. He told you where the money. He says he's done this before because yes. he does project management. That's right. So he gave it to you for you know the year. He told you where the money will come from. He told you how you will apply the money, yes. and he made it look like this isn't rocket science. Correct. And it was almost like you know how they say here, you're doing me long throats. We could almost see it. You know, yes, you could almost could touch the, it. I could see the you know, houses coming yeah, out. Yeah, you could see how everybody will be benefited, including million. even the greedy people will yes. be benefited. Even the greedy. Exactly. Yeah, because there was enough to make you know, and and you actually have to believe him because the reason, despite the fact that we have so much going on here, whether to do with security, whether to do with our uh, corruption, or and yet people keep coming, like Simeons, trying to do deals with us, it tells me that there's still Huge yeah, there's still so much. Yeah. You know, I think someone like uh, David Cameron said that you know, if the way if if the UK lost money the way Nigeria lost money, that it would have wound up by now. So somehow. You know, so, but on the other side, I sort of, I, you talked about people praying. I feel sorry because I was driving in today and I could mm. see people along the way and I, I kept trying to put myself in their mind and say, what, what keeps people going in an environment like this? There's a man sitting on the road yeah. with his belongings around, yeah, him. around him. What, what hope does he have? You know, when you're so overwhelmed yeah. with how awful and how, you know, um, dysfunctional a nation is, yeah. what, 
praying is the only thing. You're almost yeah, like you've, yeah, been, yeah. you've been brought to your knees in yeah. terms of... No, once but, you're brought to your knees, you might as well... So, but, but, but then I then say to myself, and yeah. because my sister sent me something recently on the... They were celebrating... Is it Lee Kwan, the guy yeah. from Singapore? Yeah. Okay. Who just by sheer will <laughs> saw it as a destiny that he was going to lift his people out of poverty. He was going to invest his life. It just takes one person who is ready to go the distance. Because, you know, why are we playing games? Why is it that, you know, so much is at stake? People, lives are just being wasted on a daily basis. When I see it, I felt really sad. When I'm just driving into work, just looking at the people along the roadside, mm -hmm. I felt really sad. Why would I see people in this condition and not feel that it's a calling, it's a mission to get this country back on its feet? Street, yes. You know, we, we, there's so much at stake. So when I look at someone like Lee Kuan Yen in, in Singapore, it tells me that, his country had, didn't even have the raw materials we have. Yeah. He didn't have you know, the human capacity we have. Yeah. You're going to say something. And yet he had the will, he had the vision to you lift know, them out of poverty. You know, it's, um, again, discussions such as this, mm -hmm. and sometimes I just, I have to like... Inhale. <laughs> and exhale. Because, <laughs> when you um, start? You know, look, I, I, I perhaps I'm a... I'm, I'm, I'm an eternal optimist, okay, but good. these days yes. I'm, I'm, I'm losing bit by bit yes. Yes. That, that, uh, that energy of yeah. optimism that I seem to, I love and I have, mm. because I've found, I've, I've had the short end of the stick, and I've found by my own bitter experience that um, Nigeria officialdom, if I can use that expression, detests great ideas. Great ideas, yes. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because great ideas require sacrifice, right. and great ideas require hard work right. to implement. Right. Um, it might s it sounds easy how the good the do Dr. Yeah. Romaya yeah. has, has described it. Yeah. It sounds very easy, but there's a lot of paperwork to be done. Yeah. There's a lot of it's stakeholder involvement. It, it has yeah. to pass through many people. If you could only move them out. Yes, <laughs> and, and each one of these people um, within the system we'll want their cut. will want a piece Absolutely. of this. And if they cannot, I've seen instances where somebody was going to give Nigeria a ton of money for sports development just because the person at the top said, I want this. And the person said, well, we, can't, well, we don't do that. And, and he the said, well, then, then, take, the then take that yeah. thing and go. Yes. I've yeah. seen so many yeah. things like that. Yeah. So, I mean, but yes, I do believe that you require this sacrificial leadership, this person, yeah. visionary, that, this visionary, this person that says, look, um, Mine is not even about second term. It's yeah. just I've got four years, four years yeah. and I'm willing to, to lay the foundation. Make, lay the foundation. Mm -hmm. Let somebody else come. But if I do well in these four years, and they give me, and they give me let, another. Let me four even years, talk about something you know, you know so something about. I, I, Sorry, it's just it's painful to listen because I've been yeah. in such rooms where you hear such brilliant mm -hmm. ideas. You see it, and not just in housing, but in technology. Okay. And look, it's almost as if government is a problem, that if you get government out of the way, and you I talked about yeah. it sometimes, well, the then the people will, will progress. Fact, that, that, that <laughs> you know, I was going to say it's that. scary. <laughs> yes. that are we wired to fail? Oh, I can't, right? I can't system, accept the that. The <laughs> system of government mm. you know, makes it very difficult. You have brilliant ideas, mm -hmm. but imagine the number of stakeholders you have to convince you know, to get. And they've made it a culture that yeah, they must you know, have their culture. cost. So in the end, you find, you know, you know ideas team. just yeah, fizzling out like that. And the, and the losers eventually is, yeah, everybody. everybody yeah. Yeah. But I was going to say, yeah, I heard housing deficits still. Yeah. Brilliant ideas, yeah. ideas yeah. like this. Yeah. Yeah. Funds are there, but yeah. we can't roll we them can't out. Roll, yeah. Huge problem. I overheard a conversation, uh, someone saying just recently about, you know, how, is it ITV, you know, yeah. could have been there, given DSTV a run yeah. for their money. Because you know, whereas maybe, um, I think it's Star Times, all that, all that yeah. big, the, the government steps in. Yeah. A bit like our airline, our aviation yeah. system to prop them up, they let them fail, you know, and, and if they had stepped in, maybe we would have had an, a, um, a competition for DSTV. I, I don't, you don't, I don't even want to say I don't want to say anything. Uh, <laughs> I I'm, also, I'm also involved in all of this, because uh, uh, a gentleman but you who agree ran with that. a close friend of mine. Yeah. Yeah, I, you know, this is what I believe, you know, despite the failings of the, the company itself, I think that sometimes government needs to support businesses. Look, when I was head of um, the FEMA Video Census Board in the, in the mid two uh, mid 2000s, um, we did a raid and closed down a certain South African owned business. Not South African government owned, but just because the company yeah. came from South Africa. And I remember being in the hospital, my wife was ill, she was going, we were going into surgery and my phone rang and it was somebody from the cabinet office of the presidency 
in I say calling to say they're trying to reach my Mr. Mba and I should hold on for a certain powerful gentleman <laughs> in, 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 of that country, of South Africa. And I'm like, who? And evidently, eventually I picked up the, the, the call and I remember telling the, 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 the honorable gentleman on the other side that I'm sorry, I cannot take this call. I'm not allowed to take a call from such a high office to my person, mm -hmm. and I don't know you, it's not personal. Mm -hmm. You have to call my minister. Go through the channel. Um, go to, and I'm sorry, sir, I can't take the call. But it just, I want you to understand how far they had to go in order to seek for the interest of the company, small, okay. tiny company. Right. They were trying to boycott the, the minister. Because Not just, you know, the, you know the, 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 eventually they couldn't reach him. They felt that because uh, the minister had said to somebody who was close to them, you have to go to the this DG, person, this yeah. person, because he, he's in charge. Whatever he says, I will do. You know, and then they felt the first thing was to, to reach, out, come, to reach you, out to me. To and, you, yes. you know. so, but my point is, they went to that length. It shows how important it is. It shows how important them. it is okay. to protect their own businesses. Yeah, own business. yes. Even though it's not a government Even though it's not a government, uh, no government business. Yeah. Yeah. So, yes. Government has to and step in, and there's a government that sees and they have this enlightened self-interest of, of their businesses. You see, you go to some of our embassies, as we talked about, it's not even on, yeah. a, on, even on an individual basis. You yeah. go to an embassy in Ghana or a place, you say you're a Nigerian business, they'll say, my friend, will you leave this place? What, go on, are you, did we bring you here? Yeah. Did we send you here? Yeah, exactly, exactly, yes. Did yeah. you get that? So yeah. there's a sentiment <laughs> where it's almost as if you're in competition with yourself yeah. or that you don't want them to succeed. You say, well, I, you know, okay, if you can, if not do well, go back to Nigeria. Mm -hmm. How do you say that to your businesses, mm -hmm. small businesses that are trying to survive We're in Ghana? We're not operating as a team. Yeah. Yeah. So that is a problem. Yeah. So it comes down to this thing where you're saying, that we... We're not a country of bright ideas. We detest. I, I, look, yeah. I, this may sound controversial, given my own experience in government, but yeah. I, I also say because given my own experience, we exactly. detest bright ideas. Oh, boy. Yeah. No, 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 I'm, 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 you, can, yeah. you can quote me any day. Yeah. We haven't had a bright we, idea. We detest that we've actually bright gone ideas. We, we and see it's not innovation. because they aren't Oh, yeah, exactly. of course. What We're are you talking so about? So what do we do, we, Chuka? The ball is in your what court. What do we do? <laughs> what do we do? We need to get <laughs> political leaders who love people with bright ideas. And I'm sure they're there, but and they're so you swamped find by. That, yeah, you find that uh, islands, there are islands of bright people with bright ideas. You saw um, um, the man across the first governor there, Liel, I mean, not, um, before Donald Leo, Duke. Donald Duke, yeah. bright ideas, he had people, and he brought people from all over. And he attracted As much thing. as you might, the, the, some people do not like the politics of Erufai, he's a man who likes bright ideas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right, yeah. I, I, yeah. I'll, I'll give that to him. Mm -hmm. um, and you, you, you see that in pockets, but we need to connect like this. Yes. Such, uh, right? you know, so it I think we need like, more yes, of such people. That Maybe some will know. Politics, as I said, too early. It's still too early. Politics will trump law anytime, any day. Yeah. So you need okay. people who wield political office, who love bright And they can see that it's a win-win exactly. yeah, for all right. of us, yeah. long, long distance. Yeah. So that's why all of us need to invest in, in getting politics the right and people. getting the right people in, 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 in offices. Mm, interesting. Mm. Well, unless we deal with authentic solutions, we'll never get at the heart of the matter. Here's what you get real with us as concerns our advocacy. On my topic concerning psychophancy in the civil service, Stephen Kranz says, Nigeria, which way forward? Nigeria, reset, reset your brain to normal. Still on the same topic, Nina Briggs says, mommy, oh yo yo, absolute classic. On making Nigeria work for us, Obi says, Ucho Koli, you are spot on. I even find that when you do complain, other customers around you look at you as if you are being difficult and that you should just accept whatever you are dished out. This is a serious systemic problem, Uche. Well, keep your comments coming in. On our social media platforms, on Facebook, plus TV Africa, hashtag the Advocate NG, or on Twitter and Instagram, at plus TV Africa, the Advocate NG. To catch up with previous broadcasts, go to plustvafrica.com forward slash the advocate and don't forget to subscribe to our youtube channel plus tv africa thank you for squaring up with us we value your comments after the break a can makes a direct demand on a heated issue i think already there's the african what you're saying about 
the entire Africa condemning it is beginning to happen. Mm -hmm. um, as we see, we'll see over the next few days how it goes um, and all that. But uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I find this whole thing almost like, I don't know, it's like a very it's a funny dream. You know, these people suddenly getting up, fighting their own brothers and sisters, if that's what you want to call all of us, and all that. And um, in reality, I, 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 I think that um, South Africans are yet to recover from what they've been through. That's what it is. Mm. It, it's like PTSD. They're suffering from some stress, traumatic stress disorder. Mm -hmm. And um, so it's, you're not going to find good reason and logic to what they're doing. Uh, except, they want, except maybe if you want to say that there's a lot of logic in somebody saying, give me my country and get out. That's actually. But what was the argument that we did it to the Ghanaians? Uh, no, 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 no. Well, we'll come, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, when we told them to leave and but, uh, Ghana must go. But, but it wasn't with, with this kind of systematic violence. Yeah. yeah. But the fact is, we wanted them to yeah, go. Yeah, but yes. uh, we did want we felt them that to they go. were also we did, we hindering did, our yes, progress. We, yes. we, we asked them to go. Uh, they left. Yes. But this system in which we have the systematic violence mm. against. Yes. Um, so people from other yes, people from other countries. It's systemic. Yes, um, there was no systemic violence, mm. and I think yes, as sad as our own situation when we asked Ghana to go and it was a government policy. Yeah. This I was, was going to yeah, say that maybe was, because we had yeah, the backing yeah. of our government, so it was, and they don't yeah. seem to have the backing it, it of their government. It was a systematic. Government. Okay, let's put it this way: it was a systematic exit, mm. Mm -hmm. forceful exit of Ghanaians from our, our country mm -hmm. for economic reasons. Yeah. Uh, but in, in, in this instance, in South Africa, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's almost a tacitly, not government sanctioned, I will, I will be careful to say that, but maybe um, uh, uh, it was systematic violence against no, but non South Africa. Uh, the non reason I brought up the Ghanaian thing is that some people are even angry that they dared to tell us to leave. But we have asked people to leave. Because the message, yes, the it way was, they're sending out the message it is wasn't wrong, about leaving. But it's the same okay, message. It wasn't about, about leaving. People have, been, people have been asked to leave. Mm. Um, um, uh, and it was actually, in our case, it was illegals. Right. Because this was before we actually formalized ECOWAS. Mm -hmm. um, so l l let's get this straight. People are um, removed from South Africa on a daily basis. Okay. Who yes, have entered South Africa that's illegally, illegally yeah. or who have committed crimes are being removed on a daily basis. Okay. If you if you if you frequent so, if you frequent that South Africa yeah. uh, Lagos Johannesburg route, you see Nigerians being removed yeah, even at the airport on a, almost on a daily basis. So that's not the point. Mm. The point is that you have systematic violence. You know, intolerance, intolerance. On the street, that's systematic. You know, yeah. yeah. Not. Against non-South Africans yeah. and violence, and and they, they, they promote it, and it's, it's almost as if, look, um, you know, and it's it's even even at the times when we when we did this, and I don't like this what about is because we did it, mm. and therefore uh, you know it excuses this. Mm. No, you know, I mean, I, I, I don't think we should even. No, go I just wanted to explore the, whether yeah, they, you can point, identify with wanting other people to go out oh, because oh, you feel they're. Oh Something yeah, when people, when so people even even in your home, someone becomes a problem. Mm. You can tell the person, you know, open the door for the person. <laughs> you overstayed know, your welcome. You also do. <laughs> but you don't start beating the person and killing the person, yes. do you? Yes. No, you I, ask I, the person to go. Mm. I think I think it's it's just misplaced rage, mm. you know. Yeah. Um, and the way they're executing it, you know, you begin to suspect that there's elements of envy because they, yeah. they target economic. The Prospect. economic side yeah. prospects, yeah. you know, why are they tar targeting shops and businesses mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. foreigners, yeah. you know? But for me, I think they really need to sit down and look at the numbers. These people they're targeting, you know, constitute just minute percentage oh, yeah. of that economic, yeah. whatever concerns yeah. they have. Yeah. The, the white men still run their country. They hold the economy. Minimum, Small yeah. percentage of white people yeah. still yeah. control the economy yeah. of our country. Yeah. Yeah. You know, turning their backs on us. If we leave, we'll still not make things better for them. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing you know, will change. In, fact, the, in, some, will change. in some places, they will even suffer more. I know in some places like in East London, where a lot of Nigerian own businesses and car shops, and mechanic workshops, the same thing in Durban, they will suffer more because we employ a lot of them, a lot of the locals. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you see a Nigerian who runs a, a car showroom or a business, um, and he has like 20, 30 local staff working for him. Mm -hmm. The same thing in parts of Johannesburg, the same thing in, 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 in Durban, in, in parts of Mpumalanga. So I think that, you know, I mean, there are hospitals, the biggest hospital in Johannesburg, mm. 
the Nigerian staff account for uh, over 40% mm -hmm. of the medical staff. Imagine if 40% of medical staff left, left. in that huge hospital, one of the biggest hospitals in Africa, actually, mm -hmm. will leave. Mm -hmm. What that will mean. So it's not, it's not a rational thing. So it's not a rational I mean, thing. I, 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 I mean, I, I agree mm -hmm. that where people become, if they're the Nigerians involved in criminal crime. activity or Correct. who are in your country illegally, mm -hmm. they should be removed systematically. I think, again, for me, when I look at it, it's multifaceted, you know, mm -hmm. and especially when you're dealing with people like, you know, who have gone through a trauma, in a sense, a national yeah. trauma, right. where you think that, you know, for most of, uh, you were being governed by people who came in and colonized your, your, your I mean, this jacket I'm so wearing. So why, why are they not targeting, targeting the, the white the people that colonized them? Well, I, I spoke you with, know? I, I, I spoke why are they not targeting the white people? Someone looking from, for soft targets. Uh, yeah, 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 looking yeah for that's what she said. <laughs> that you're, you're, she said you're nearby, you're it's accessible, and yeah. you seem to be, you know, they, they, you fit the narrative of yeah. you are the ones yeah. taking their job. Correct, yeah. You know, I was going to point out that this jacket I'm wearing is a South African made jacket. And the whole outfit You're not boycotting, sir. No, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're married, though. I have South African. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I so I'm, I'm even as good as South African. But, you know, this, this, if you see the full outfit, it's, it, it sends confusing messages. You know, it, it, okay. it looks like something colonial with the, the corset and the, you know, and it's almost like the white man if you yeah. see the jacket. And yet right. it's made with some of these South African. So okay. they, they have a bit of a confused, they're not sure. According to the lady I interviewed and the article she sent me, you know, a South African, right. she said, you know, part of it is that these black South Africans see themselves as superior to Africans. You know, and one of the videos I watched of a young man, he was saying, you know, what's wrong with these people? They can't make a go of their country and they want to come and spoil ours. Uh, yeah, they should right. go back to Africa, like these Nigerians really looking down yeah, on us, yeah, yeah. that we've gone and trashed our country and want yeah. to come back. We should just go. So they have no sense. She says, unfortunately, they have no sense of brotherhood with us. Yeah. You know, they don't see that yeah. they are, they don't understand this thing we're saying when we say, oh, we stood with you in apartheid. They yeah. just feel we should leave them be. Since yeah. we've messed up our country, we shouldn't come and mess up theirs. Yeah. So it, there needs to be a conscience. They're, like, they're doing a good job of messing up theirs. Then then we don't. Very then good then job. And, they they will yeah. it. They and, and, and look, look, uh, Botswana, their closest neighbor, yeah. has issued a travel advisory. Um, Zimbabwe, the same thing. Zambia. Mm -hmm. I mean, so it's not uh, going well. If, if they insulate themselves, eventually, I it will think, affect them. Oh, I think it will affect it will. them a, a lot more <laughs> than 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 any con any other country. No. And I think it's even more worrying, worrisome when you have you know top government functionaries now. In a very subtle or openly, yeah. you know, supporting uh, xenophobia. xenophobia. Oh like my that. goodness! It, it becomes a big problem. No, but then what's of the Nigerian reaction? Because you know, again, we're trying to say, how do we move on from this so we can have proper dialogue and get things right? You know, the attack on ShopRite, the attacks on cars. When I look yeah. at all those, it doesn't. It to me it seems like a similar robbery. kind it's of. It's not xenophobia. <laughs> xenophobia. Yeah. I, think, I, think I think it's just. <laughs> it's, it's, I think it's just it's an crazy. avenue for, it's an them avenue to, for people to just to steal and loot right, things. Yeah. Um, yeah. And look, people are angry. Let's not. Let's not. Uh, people no, are angry. And beyond but, you know, beyond this, but, but I think that issue, yeah, yeah. And, and it also harkens to that sense of where look, people are dying daily. On Sunday, um, over 30 people were killed um, in Katsina, 50-something people kidnapped. Wow. Um, we didn't see that kind of outrage. We mm -hmm. didn't see people marching okay, on the streets okay, I get you. To, to, to do that. But because we are under a flag, it's like playing football, now there's, there's another team okay. against us. So we've all right. gathered. That tells you about yeah. the human side. Yeah, it's, it's a human thing. Right. Mm -hmm. So now we have a common enemy. Yes. Right. But right. we can afford to kill each other. Um, not so much of a problem. Mm -hmm. But once somebody killing us, of us, then we yes. will we, we'll, we'll come that's up with That's an interesting but, but one. Let, let us not forget mm. that this has been going on for a while well, without any reaction. We've been patient yeah. for yeah, a while. Yeah, we've been patient. Mm. Mm. You know, I think I just they're just, going to, yeah, they're just, right. they're just expressing yeah. their frustration. Yeah. We've yeah. had enough. Yeah. When do yeah. we, when, when will they stop this? Or when yeah. do we call their attention to the madness? I was actually surprised when they started to call this one out. I right. thought it would fizzle out in about a day because we haven't been doing anything about it. They, they've been doing this thing for ages, like yeah, you said. Yeah. Yeah. So six months ago, this yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Six months so I was surprised ago. when it a day passed, they were still it was still in the news, mm. and it seemed that the tempo was growing. Mm. And I thought, oh, Nigerians are now finally uh, waking like up. Yeah. The fact that they are killing some of our boys and you're girls. Hearing, in, uh, you're seeing in, video. Uh, of, you know, you're no, hearing we're stories. Seeing all, of no, them. we're seeing these things. I'm, I'm, I'm well aware that. You can go to South Africa and be beat, and there will be an uprising, and you'll be beaten and killed, and then you'll stop. I've, mm. I've been at, at the airport in Johannesburg. You present a passport. You say you're coming. You say, ah, 
So you people have come to take our women, eh? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yes. It can be as bad oh, as that. Straight up. Yeah. What are you saying to that? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, this is immigration person. And yeah. not, not doesn't say it the way, you know, Nigeria might say it as a joke. Yeah. Ah, you people have come to, you know, it says it painful. with anger, aggression. With, with, with aggression. Yeah. Wow. And that uh, you Nigerians, eh? You people should, uh, you should do and go back. You know, I mean, you, you, you see all of this um, very... Uh, there's and anger. Talk. Yeah. But, you know, I mean, I'm not excused. Appetite has done uh, damage. Yeah. No, but damage. you mentioned take out women. Yeah, Even yeah. the women, you know, the student recently that was, that was bludgeoned in yeah. the post office by a fellow South African. So they went to protest at the economic forum because they said, look, this for them is representative of the way they treat their women. So they, yeah. they, have, they have problems with anger, they have problems with even among themselves, mm -hmm. yes. the way they handle yeah. their women. So, yeah. you know, you're, you're dealing with probably, like you said, the fallout from yeah. Yeah, yeah, the yeah, trauma of being trauma of, yeah. subdued yeah. and made time. to, yeah. you know, emasculated With no almost. healing period, yeah. no... Um, no looking into the no problem. No looking into the problem. And no therapy. Knowing that, hey, that's it, no therapy. You mm -hmm. know? But I think, it's, again, uh, our government should, you know, take lessons from this. Yes, you know, for and it internal. should be um, like that warning bell. Yes. Yeah. yes, South Africans don't leave their country. They don't leave. You know, and that's the anger. Well, so we're saying dialogue, not destruction, is the way forward. After the break, Emeka sets out to stir up some direct dialogue as he points the finger at the root causes of our underdevelopment. Stay tuned. Welcome to The Advocate, a program that thrashes out all the topical issues of the day. When you are in government, you don't see nothing wrong mm, with exactly. whatever is happening. The moment you are out there, everything is that wrong. Is, you yeah. can't even see yes. many women now, and when they're there, they're not even really making a mark, and then they have an NYSC problem and this and that. One of the reasons why we don't have more women in politics and enjoys for as long as political meetings continue to take place in the middle of the night. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But really. It's disastrous for a president to, even to be unaware. unaware of it, the chief it's justice. It's a ploy. It could be a strategy. That strategy was it's a terrible, like strategy. Fire. <laughs> terrible strategy. Because the box stops at your table. Whether it's that we don't look after our cities and quite frankly Nigeria is becoming a very ugly place. Mm. When you are the only one feeding the people with this news and there is nobody countering them, it becomes, you know, the, the news. If we don't call it out, it will seem as though we condone it. Many years ago, my wife warned me. She said, anyone who comes to you and starts up a conversation, a discussion and starts um, and adds things like, in the name of God, I'm born again, I'm a pastor, you can trust me. She said, flee. First time I didn't listen. I said, no, Obi and I, and I were in school together. We go way back. He's a good guy. Well, that story didn't end well. Look, I'm a big believer in African arts and culture, but I do have to admit that a huge aspect of our African problem is our anchor to tradition. We do have a reluctance in most parts of Africa to let go, the reluctance to let go of certain aspects of our traditional culture, which has held us back and has denied us the ability to embrace innovation and change. We often value the past more than we look forward to the future. Afraid to let go of our glorious heritage, which was and still is steeped in small gods, most of these gods that failed us when the white man came with superior weapons of violence. Gods of unexplainable things, gods that can never be questioned, a disdain for exploration, a persistent apathy to new ideas, and indeed a sacred duty to excommunicate those who do. And sadly, we have carried over this mindset to Christian religiousness. Touch not my anointed, you hear that all the time, has become the new cover for religious leaders and indeed political leaders who abuse their calling and exploit their flocks. See how conveniently we have moved on to the white man's gods, yet despising our own gods and unwilling to let go of our tradition. We rather enjoy the mercy of foreign gods and dread the judgment of Amadio and Shongo. Until our old ways give way to the new, we're doomed to live in this vicious cycle of self-harm and underdevelopment. When there's an abundant incentive to worship the status quo, there will equally be a corresponding high probability that we remain as we are, stagnant, and accusing others of our failure to move forward. Even within government and public service, there's a certain aversion to knowledge and rigor. Especially in Nigeria, this is my own personal experience, we want the best of everything, but are poor the hard work required. It is after all cheaper to call on God or blame others. We claim we want development, 
yet we delight in a destructive mentality of scarcity and anchor of tradition. Development and progress requires us to let go, question the status quo, embrace possibilities, and constantly adapt. Otherwise, the distance between what we hope for, wish for, pray for, and what we actually get will grow even further. <laughs> Say, do you want to jump in? <laughs> <laughs> <He's like> mm. <laughs> uh, well, um, it's um, what, issues it's concerning. One? It's a tough one. Okay. It's a tough one and very sensitive, you know, because of how, you know, emotionally yeah. charged we get when it comes to the issue of religion. You know, um, um, a whole lot has, you know, changed. Yeah. I mean, earlier we were talking about, you know, how you know, um, religion, different religions. And for me, I think um, it's, it's, I, I, I want to be very you careful. Be. Why are you being so be careful? Be Nothing careful. will happen. Uh, yeah, I, I, I <laughs> be You're among friends. <laughs> yeah, I, I want to be very careful with, with, with We'll with deal religion. with you. Mm. Maybe I'll just okay. let uh, you come. Well, yeah, I think, I think, yes, I, I, when I, you know, listening to it, um, I, it resonated completely with me. It's true, we don't want to let go of our tradition, when, and yet, at the same time, there are certain very important anchors within that tradition that, we're, so that we've so easily let go of, and, um, uh, and that's why we're going to be contradicting ourselves for, for very many years. Even as an architect, um, my buildings don't look Nigerian, don't look Nigerian, but they are Nigerian, because spatial hierarchy, and space organization of you know of spaces within the buildings that I do are drawn from uh, historical examples of Nigerian buildings. So I'm sure a lot of people were surprised at a lecture recently where somebody was saying uh, Igbo architecture and uh, <laughs> mentioned three architects who he felt were Igbo today's architects. today's Igbo architects. There was me. And I'm sure that drew shock from everybody because, like, that guy's a modernist, I mean, you know, and all that. And what it is is very simple. There are a lot of people who, in our field, uh, feel that um, unless it looks like that Igbo building from 100 years ago, then it isn't. And that's not true. We must make progress. It's a must. Mm -hmm. There must be that evolution and movement and innovation. We have to, you know, I'm not saying change for change's sake. Well, you have to. Times are different, and you can't tell me that the same thing solves the problems uh, uh, of today. Uh, well, I mean, my, my issue, I, I, I like the fact that you are looking for, I call it a backstory, mm. as to why we are the way we are. You're trying to, because I think, like, like we just discussed mm. xenophobia, unless you puzzle these things, unless you apply your mind to it, you're in danger of just ending up in this cycle of, and not understanding what is triggering certain behavior, certain attitudes. And it's clear we seem to be caught in a kind of what? It's a circle. Yeah. Well, so, yeah. but, but I, I, there, there's certain things for me that are contradictory in what you're saying. So, um, for example, and I'll let you answer when I finish, I'm not clear what is the old and what is the new. Mm. And I'm not clear, for me, it would work better to sort of say, okay, we have a certain way of approaching things as a people, and that right. plays out in the way we do politics, in the way we practice religion, and even in the way we relate to our fellow humans, even in the way we do business. Because I know uh, my, my in-law, who is South African, just happens to be, was saying to me that we have a way of white South African. We have a way of revering that his problem with the way we do business is that we still carry on this reverence, you know, which translates to nepotism. We still want to, we don't want to hold people accountable in ways that we should. And so we don't practice professionally yeah. within our business systems. So he has a problem with the way, you know, you oga, oga, oga. So you won't make the oga be transparent mm -hmm. and give you, and so he sees that in, in the way we relate to ourselves. And, in, and he would like to see more of, why haven't you done this in a professional capacity? That way, maybe we'll have systems that work for us. And he sees it in our politics. He sees it in our religious practices. You know, touch not my anointed. So that's the way I would want to approach that. We're already a people who are predisposed to be a bit too reverential for reasons we haven't even articulated to ourselves. And so we find it hard. You know, like I, I, I as you all know, I, I, I practice. I'm a Christian. But I always have issues in church gatherings because I refuse to call anybody daddy or mommy. And I tell them the reason I won't do that because I want people to hold you accountable the day you say something outside of what is scriptural. And they don't like the way I approach my own because I say, you're not God, mm -hmm. you're just an instrument that 
God could use, but you could also deviate. So I want to be watching you from enough of a distance. I don't, I don't subscribe to all this mentoring, mentoring. Yeah, yeah. And people come to me and they say, I said, don't mentor. Because I can easily adopt, I can watch Seidu without him becoming my mentor. Yes. And I can take things from him. Yeah, you know, absolutely. I can, you know, you will know. I don't need to take everything from me because I know that the day you then step outside of what is right, you I will, know, I'll, you will I'll quickly know. abandon. Why abandon must I you. mark your footsteps? Why am I, why are we always looking for someone to come under? So those are my issues with us. And I wish we were less like that and more critical, more holding people accountable and understanding that we have a right to say to someone, why are you doing what you're doing? Give us an account of your, your, your stewardship without fear, without, you know, feeling as if you've done something wrong. You know, you know, so, so, so the reason for this advocacy or this premise is that I find that, you know, um, when I mean culture and tradition, there's certain things. So we, we want to live in two worlds. The, 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 the African, modern African wants to live in two worlds. Mm. We want to live in the world of, of the, the Western, Western white world. Yes. And we also want to hold back to a tradition. And so you're caught. Between in, two this, yeah. in this two, uh, you're not the young generation. To, yeah, even more cost. Yeah, you're not able to move forward. Um, and I find it from how we dress, how we how we talk, how the issue of who we hold accountable. You want to hold this person accountable. Oh, he's an old man. Respect him. Mm. But the man is doing something wrong. Mm. He's not doing his job. You say, mm -hmm. ah, but you know, he's an old man. You know, we're not we're supposed to respect our elders. Yeah. Heck no. If he's not yeah. fit for the job, he's not Tell fit him. for the Professor job. Shrink on the plane. <laughs> it's 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 mm. he's wrong. He's wrong. It's not a question of whether because he's an old man. Mm. You know. In fact, the reason why he's an if he's an old man, he should know better. Yeah, he should mm. know better. He should know better. Mm. So this thing about you have people in churches. Um, even though he's a knight of the Catholic Church, someone has died, they go to the village, the woman must shave her hair, must wash the body mm, yeah. of the, of and the drink dead the water and drink the, the water. Oh my goodness. Yeah, it is a knight. Then he will tell you in church, yeah. ah, you know, Mr. Mbai, you know, this is leave church things for church, or this one is tradition. Mm, mm. You what the heck? Give to Caesar one. what is Caesar. Yeah, yeah. Let, <laughs> let's lose one. Let's yes. lose. If you're going to go, on, because you cannot, you cannot. And that is why in Western Europe, in the age of Reformation, and, and they had to lose yeah, something. something. So, but let me ask forward. you, because you cannot. Let me can, and, and that's a problem with modern religion I here agree. today. Mm -hmm. That we sit in this new, brave new Nigeria, and we hold, and that's why you find so much religion, and yet so much poverty, and yet so much struggle, corruption so much and corruption. everything. Mm -hmm. Because people will always excuse it, it is God. Yeah. God is the most convenient vehicle, but it's not our God. Because if you tell somebody, swear with Ahmad Yoha. In fact, I'll just swear, I'll, swear, I'll, swear. I'll, okay, I was gonna say that. you're going to office now. Let's take you to to the swear, swear. He will not. He will say, "Give me the Bible," because mm. he, he believes that that, that God is very distant. That God is very forgiving. He will not follow the God of his uh, his, uh, his village. Mm. I was gonna say so, that if the National Assembly members were asked to swear by Amadioha and Shongo and the you. rest, a lot of them will not. <laughs> forgive. Yes. I'm not sure. But from facing, I, not, from I, I facing, have a reason for why they may swear. not do that. Right. But I will. <laughs> I will. I, I, I will yeah, be because they know, they know yeah. the consequences. I will. I will, I will, I will, I will it's not direct. It's not direct. I don't. I don't agree, with, I don't agree with you guys, but I won't go there, so I don't get distracted. Let me let me go where I want to go, and where I want to go is I wanted to ask you. I wanted to ask you first. I want to agree with you that the reason we have this sort of we're stuck between two worlds as it is, and I'm fascinated by that, and why we don't seem to be seen bearing fruit in one area is that we lack conviction one way or the other. So you have to you have to believe in something enough to put your whole life into it. That's how it becomes your identity. You know, you really believe in this thing and, and, and you, you, you live by it. Um, but I was gonna ask you about the UK because the UK are very traditional people to a point where people say, oh, these people worship all these there, you know, monuments and, and they, they love it. That's part of who they are. It hasn't held them back from embracing innovation. No, no, so I'm not trying to say that. No, are you no, trying to say that no, we must? No, 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 you know? let, let, me, let, me, let me say something about that. Mm. They have separated that. It is ceremonial. It is meant, look, it's like, it's oh just, yes, it's just it is ceremonial, it's part of the history. Yeah. They don't bring it, and that's why even within the British political system, the fact of the Queen being the head of government is ceremonial. Mm. The laws, everything is still done by the British parliamentary governance. So it's not that the Japanese are not religious. It is not that the Chinese are, are not great religious. Yeah. It is not that the Indonesians are not religious. It is not that the, uh, the people in Singapore are not religious. But they understand it that that is a tool for, to build a society that's cohesive, that's modern, that's civilized, that respects one another's rights. No, but let me, let me, make, so, let so, me present so an I, alternative. No, no because you, you've made the presentation. Let me give you an alternative perspective. It could, it's not necessarily the, the dominance of the religion practice that is at stake here. 
it's the fact that they don't, we don't do it with conviction. We don't do it, because if you were to practice, let's say Christianity, because that's what's being tabled here, genuinely and sincerely, like people like you know, John Wesley, Charles Wesley, some of these people who gave their whole, the, the founding fathers of yeah. the British system then, the Judeo-Christian, you know, you would do it, in, so even the Israelis, I mean, for goodness sake, and they're so progressive, if you were to practice it sincerely, it would turn you into a genuine human being, but we see that what is being practiced in Nigeria is not Christianity, really. That's my point. It's a covetous version of it. That's my point. So, so it's not, so rather than say, oh, we've made it the all in all, we've not made it anything at all. We're no, still, so we, we the God it, we worship is still money that, that's and that's ourselves. That's okay. my point. Mm -hmm. The point is that we use yeah, it as a cover. We're, we're still worshiping so ourselves. we're conflicted, so we use it as a cover to do the things, and we use it so that when, we, when we're caught doing one thing, we go like this. Mm. So it's better if we're going to go in the direction of, of Judeo-Christian. Mm. You go, you go, you go that way. direction. Yes. So my point is And then our point. laws and everything yes, line up. we'll follow from that, because you cannot have someone who goes, I'm going to go and do traditional wedding. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to go and do church wedding. wedding. Yes. What does that so, mean? No, 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 no. I have no problem with traditional and church. So, no, leave that one. That's our discussion for another oh, so day. We're out of time. So, so, I have no, no, you're mixing issues okay. now. We uh, have to I mean, leave I'm that one. Issues. Part two. Okay, fine. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, dialogue continues to be the best way to build bridges. We trust we have gone some way towards bridging gaps in our conversations towards national development. Now it's your turn. Keep your comments coming in on our social media platforms on Facebook, Plus TV Africa. Hashtag the advocate ng or on Twitter and Instagram at plus TV Africa hashtag advocate ng. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel plus TV Africa. Till next week, same time, let's keep advocating for a better society. Bye bye. 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 Welcome to The Advocate, a program that thrashes out all the topical issues of the day. When you are in government, you don't see nothing wrong mm, with exactly. whatever is happening. So the moment impressed. you are out there, Everything is that wrong. Is, you can't even see yes. many women now, and when they're there, they're not even really making a mark, and then they have an NYSC problem and this and that. One of the reasons why we don't have more women in politics and enjoys for as long as political meetings continue to take place in the middle of the night. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's really. disastrous for a president to, even say to be he's unaware. unaware of it, the chief it's justice. It's a ploy. It could be a strategy. That strategy was it's very, very, very <laughs> terrible strategy. <laughs> because the box stops at your table. Whether it's that we don't look after our cities and quite frankly Nigeria is becoming a very ugly place. Mm. When you are the only one feeding the people with this news and there is nobody countering them, it becomes, you know, the, the news. Yeah.